My older sister, Carolyn, was born hard of hearing. And for the first three years, she couldn't speak. So I was born understanding that some people have a voice and some people don't have a voice. And that it's the responsibility of those of us who have a voice to speak on behalf of other people. So I grew up in an environment where it was very clear to me that there was a lot of unfairness in the world and that those of us who had things that other people didn't, the privileges of being able to hear, of being born in a society where you had rights because of the color of your skin, that we had a responsibility to use those privileges to make the world better for other people. And I started writing stories, I think, from when I could first write, so probably around the age of five or six, and I illustrated them. I, my first one was called Goodbye Kitchen, which is about a little girl who goes on a picnic with the boy next door and packs everything, you know, that she wants to eat in the picnic basket. That's the whole story, what's going inside the picnic basket, which is a theme of eating, which has followed me through my life. So I spent my whole childhood drawing stories, writing stories, and it was so amazing to me that you could take a piece of paper that had nothing on it, and within moments you could create a whole world, a whole imaginative world, right there on the page using words and pictures. I think at school when I was about 12, we'd had to write something about what we wanted to become, and people had all these fabulous ideas of who and what they were going to become, and I just said, I, I, I really just want to be a mother. Um, and I remember my English teacher saying, well, Joanne, you have a lot more potential than just becoming a mother. Anyway, for me, being a mother was somehow the axis around which everything else would take place. If you cannot take a risk, if you cannot do something that scares you a little bit, if you don't have the courage to explore something with curiosity, if you can't stay connected into your pain, and to express that in the world, or your joy, or the way you see the world, uh, you know, that creativity will, it will shrivel and die inside of you. I believe that the things that really matter to us, we always do find time for, even if it means you have to get up a little bit earlier or stop doing other things. It's really a question, I think, in the end of priority. Like if I couldn't write, I couldn't exist. So it's not something that I do as a hobby, it's something I do as a necessity. Mm -hmm.